Hi, I'm Emily from LifeSewSavory.com, a sewing place where I get to sew all my favorite projects and tutorials. And today I'm going to be showing you a cute little project that I came up with for my daughter when she wanted to wear princess dresses all the time. And I'm not a huge fan of wearing costumes out of the house, but this tulle skirt I can handle. So. What I'm going to show today is just a couple of different ways and options that you can make these skirts and the different fabrics that you're going to want to use when you make them. So you can see that this one is made with a layer of tulle and a layer of just quilting cotton underneath, which provides for me the coverage that I want my daughter to have if we're going to go out of the house. This one I made with two layers of tulle. And it's nice and fluffy, but you would definitely want to wear something underneath of it because it's just two layers of tulle. So before we get started sewing, I'm just going to walk through some of the things that you would need for this and some of the sewing techniques that you're going to want to use. So like on this one, we used quilting cotton and tulle. And for each one, you would just want to measure from your child's waist to where you want the skirt to sit to the end. And or to the knee or wherever you want it to lay. This one is obviously a little bit longer. Um, so for the tool, you will just cut it that length. And then for the cotton, you'll want to add a seam allowance of a half inch to an inch, depending on what hemming technique you're going to be using. And I just take my quilting cotton and my tool and I lay it out on the cutting board and then I just cut those strips of fabric. Because what you want is you want the entire width of the fabric. And this is tool, not fabric, but you can see how I have from salvage edge to salvage edge on the tool. So I cut two of the tool and two of the fabric. And then that will create our skirt. One is the front and one is the back. Now to make this extra full tulle skirt, I actually cut three of these sections of each color and then I sew them together in thirds. So it doesn't have a distinct front and a back, it has more sections, but it does give you an extra full skirt. Also, if you were making this in a large size for someone with a larger waist or an adult size, you would wanna cut more than two because two is not gonna provide a full enough skirt with only two sections. Um, but for this size, the say four to six year old range, two is definitely a nice um, full skirt. So after you've cut those sections of your tool and your fabric, you'll wanna lay them out and sew the side seams. And I'll just show you here. So I used a serger to sew the side seam and then I don't hem this, so I have this raw serger edge right here. And you'll wanna use a fray stopping medium. Just give a little dab, and then after that dries in a few minutes, you can go ahead and clip those, and you'll have a nice finished edge, like this one, okay? And then I, obviously I used gray, so you could see very clearly what I've done, but white would have been you know, a more appropriate choice. So you want to match the threads as much as possible on this project so that you don't see them when you're finished. So after you've sewed the side seams on both the cotton and on the tool, you'll want to hem your cotton. And you can use a variety of hemming methods. I just used a three stitch cover stitch to hem this and that will keep it from fraying. You can also serge around the bottom and then turn up your hem or you can iron under a half inch uh, and then a half inch again, or a quarter inch and a half inch, whatever your preferred hemming method is. But before you do any gathering or sewing around the top, I like to finish off the bottom of the skirt. So this one I just did a simple, um, I surged around it, and then I turned it up and I hemmed it, and then this one I did the cover stitch, and the tool only version has no hem, just the raw, tool on the edge, but it won't fray, so we can leave it just like that. So what I want to do is show you a very easy and simple method to gather using the serger. If you don't have a serger, you can gather on your regular sewing machine just fine. Um, but this is a method that I like to use using my serger, and it's just a one-step gathering um, tool. Now, if this were really gonna be a skirt, I would have a circle of tulle, but I'm just gonna demonstrate the gathering on this straight piece. So we're gonna move over to the serger, and then we're, I'm gonna show you the settings that I use to gather this tulle. 
Okay, so in order to gather directly on the serger without having to pull any threads, you wanna tighten the thread tension. And I like to put it about eight. And then you're also gonna adjust your stitch width and your stitch length to the highest number that your machine has. So on this one, it's a two and a four. And, and then from there, we can just run our tool straight through the machine and it will gather perfectly gathered perfectly spaced gathers all the way along. And I'm not trimming much of the fabric off when I'm doing this. Um, I don't have a seam allowance really on the top. So I'm just gathering the top edge and not really trimming much of it. If your cut was a little uneven, you may want to trim that as you go. And make sure you're not pulling your tool or stretching it as you sew. But you can see the, the gathers that are coming out the back side. And then as you cut this off, you have your perfectly gathered even fabric just by running it through the serger one time. And you could see that if you had a circle that this would be double the width and then the great size for a little person. So now we're gonna go back over and we'll check out the elastic and then putting the whole thing together to finish off. All right, so now you've got your fabric gathered and you have one layer of cotton and one layer of tulle or you have two layers of tulle or three layers of tulle or whatever design that you've come up with. And then the next step is to grab some elastic. For a child, I like to use this 1.5 inch elastic or two inch elastic, um, and you can get it in a variety of colors to match your fabric. You can use white, you can even dye white elastic to perfectly match what project you're working on, um, or you can have a contrasting waistband, totally up to you. If you're making it for an adult, I really like to use a three inch elastic, which gives a really great waistband look. Um, on that adult skirt, but that's up to you on the, the width. But you definitely wanna use at least a 1.5 inch elastic just to give it some structure. And for the elastic, you will measure your child's waist or your waist. And then I like to actually subtract one inch so it has a nice tight fit. I find that when I'm zigzagging it on to the tool, it actually stretches out just a tiny bit, and so I wanna have that firmness and give it a nice elasticity. So take your measurement, subtract an inch, and then I just sew the waistband together by surging along there, and then using your fray stopping medium again to close each end before you trim that fabric. So we're just gonna sew this together, and then we'll come back and pin it on the skirt. Oh. Good thing, before I do that, I wanna make sure I change my tension and my settings back to where they are for regular stitching. So I just move the tension, the thread tension's back to four, and then the width and length back to the um, factory settings or the um, average settings. All right, so now you have your elastic in a circle with a wrong side and a right side that you're gonna use. This would be more an adult size if you were sewing that. So I've got a kid size waistband and a kid size skirt here and I have already pinned together about half of it. And just like when you um, are normally sewing, you're gonna want to position the waistband evenly around. So I've pinned on the half and on the quarter, and then I haven't pinned this side at all. So you would stretch this one and then pin it around. And when you're doing it, you'll have three layers, the cotton, the tulle, and the elastic. And then I just put it all together with a simple zigzag. So we're just gonna pop over to the sewing machine and just do a little bit of zigzag around here to show you how it goes, and then you'll be able to see the finished ones that I've already done for you. So on my zigzag, I just have a regular zigzag setting and I like to remove this part of the sewing machine so I can get my little waist right in here. And it is kind of fat because you have the two layers of gathered fabric and you have the elastic. So you wanna position everything nicely and then just use a zigzag and stitch 
give yourself a little back stitch, and then try to just stitch evenly around, and you'll keep the three layers of fabric lined up. Your elastic should overlap your fabric about a quarter inch to a third of an inch. So you stitch around the entire circumference of your skirt, and then you'll be able to pull it off and you've pretty much finished the skirt. So if there's any trimming you need to do on the hem, sometimes I find that after sewing the tool gets a little uneven, you can go back and fix any of those that you might have and then you should have a finished tool skirt. So we'll just go over here and show the final. I didn't get all the way around it, but you can definitely see the idea. And then you would also, again, use the same color thread that you have for your elastic, just to have that all blend in nicely. But an easy tool skirt that you can make for your daughter or it also makes a fabulous gift.